and welcome to our first news broadcast at WFBT. I'm Kelly Quickton. We've been busy tracking the stories of what some call the disciples of Jesus. These accounts can be found in the book of the Bible called Acts. It really escalated around Passover. This great Jewish celebration was interrupted by Jesus coming into Jerusalem on a donkey like he was a king. Everyone was praising him and putting their coats on the ground and palm leaves on the ground to show that they wanted him to lead them. But then less than a week later, the same people had him arrested and crucified. That was a super sad day for the whole world. But then three days later, his grave was empty and he spent almost another month with his friends. Then one day his friends were gathered around him as he said goodbye to them. Then something really unusual happened. Jesus went up in the sky through the clouds and everything, and he was never seen on earth again. That's what we call the Ascension. Then a few days later, there was another strange event. Remember that there was a crowd of people gathered together praying and missing Jesus. When there were flames that landed on them, and the Holy Spirit came to help them. We see a real change in the disciples and other followers of Christ at this point. Peter and John spent time going about preaching and teaching about Christ. They were even able to heal some people, like the lame man by the temple. They were put in prison for preaching, but they knew that it was better to obey Christ than the Jewish leaders, so they kept preaching. New Christians were added to God's family very quickly at this time. We heard of a man named Joseph. Do you remember his nickname? Barnabas, or son of encouragement. He encouraged the disciples and other believers around him. Now the new Christians really needed a lot of encouragement at this time because the Jewish leaders were always looking to get them into trouble for believing in Jesus. If you remember some of the story of Stephen, you will figure out why they were afraid. Stephen was obeying God and teaching about Jesus and was stoned to death for that, but that didn't stop others from continuing to teach. Philip decided to go all over the land to teach about Jesus, and he became what we call a missionary. He even led a man from Ethiopia to Jesus and baptized him. Now remember, all of these accounts probably makes you wonder what our interview could be about today. Well, let's get to our news broadcast and see if that helps you understand. You can find this account that we will be talking about written down in the book of Acts. All of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 31. If you want a second, take a second. Go grab your Bibles and turn to that, and you can follow along and maybe learn even more about what our guest has to say today. We have a special guest with us today who wrote several books of the Bible. Good morning. Good morning. Please introduce yourself. Well, as you said... I did write several books of the Bible. My name is Paul, and I'm also one of the apostles you may have heard about. Now, some people may know me by my Hebrew name, which is Saul. Now, Saul, as in the Saul that helped stone Stephen? Yes. You see, I was a religious leader. I loved Jehovah God. Jehovah was the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We loved God. We wanted to serve God. But these Christians, as they called themselves, were going around telling everybody Jesus was the Son of God. We couldn't have that. We thought they were lying. So what did you do to these Christians? Well, I would go door to door. I would knock on the doors. I would drag anyone who was a Christian. I would drag him out, send him off to prison to be put to death. You see, I hated these Christians. So what happened to change your mind? <laughs> Interesting you ask that. Well, all these Christians, they began to flee the city because they were afraid. Imagine that. So I was determined to hunt them down. So I started down the road to Damascus. I took my soldiers with me. We started down the road. And all of a sudden, there was a flashing, blinding light and a voice. I fell to the ground. A voice? From where? What did it say? Who was it? Uh, the voice said to me, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? I was so afraid. I asked, who are you, Lord? Wow, what was the answer? Hmm. The voice answered, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. 
I was trembling. I said, Lord, what should I do? He answered, get up, go to the city, and I will tell you what you must do. So did you go to the city? Well, I staggered to my feet, and I realized I was blinded. I could not see a thing. So the soldiers, with, they came to help me. They helped me up. They helped me to the city. I stayed in the city for three days. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. I was sickened. I just waited to see what would happen to me. Well, it looks like you can see now. So what happened? Yes, praise the Lord. A Christian man named Ananias, he had a dream one night that Jesus came to him and told him to come help me. Hmm. But you wanted to put these Christians in prison. Wasn't he afraid to help you? <laughs> oh, you bet he was afraid. You see, Ananias knew I was carrying a letter from the chief priest that said I could arrest any Christian in Damascus. <laughs> he told the Lord, Lord, I'm afraid to come. But, <laughs> you know, Ananias, he's a smart guy. So he did come or did well, he? he did come, actually. God told him, Ananias... This man I have sent to be a messenger, so I need you to go. Hmm. So what did he do when he arrived? Well, Ananias came, he put his hands on me, and he prayed. And he said, Brother Saul, Jesus who appeared to you on the road to Damascus, he has come that you, you may have sight and you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So you were healed? Yes, you see, after he finished praying, the scales, they fell off my eyes. I could see, but in a new way. Not only could I see, but my, my mind was changed. My heart was changed. I praise the Lord. Praise God for that. Amazing. So what did you do next? Huh. Well, you know, I felt like a new man. So I began to eat. I began to, to drink more. I began to know who Jesus was. I began to go around preaching and teaching. I was baptized, and I've been preaching ever since. Wow, what an amazing story. What a strange twist of fate for the would-be destroyer of Christianity to now become the most well-known of all God's apostles. God's gift of grace was given to all the world. In his majesty, God can take even the most hateful of all people and turn him around for his own good purposes. Never think that you are unworthy for God's work. Even as God took Saul, the most unlikely, God can take you and turn you into a precious gem that will shine for all the world to see. He has a special work for you, too. We hope that you have a great week and that we can find a way to share Jesus with someone this week. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, we are just so thankful for the story of our new friend, and character from the Bible, Paul, that we are learning has changed so much, Father, from wanting to kill Christians to becoming one that's fighting and fighting to share the gospel and share the love of Jesus with other people. We just are thankful to see the change in him, knowing that someone is that seems so evil can turn into be such a good follower of God. Lord, we just pray that you'll help the kids that watch this video and the adults that they would be able to understand and make changes in their life to as God would want them to. In your name, amen. So we'll see you next week. Bye guys! Hello children! It's Karen here again and today we're going to be making a caterpillar and God it's a finished product, and God made caterpillars for a special reason. And caterpillars are the first part of a butterfly's life. And you learned about Saul, and he became Paul, and Paul had a new life. So it was like Saul was a caterpillar, and then when he came to know Christ and became Paul, then he became like the butterfly. And so we are going to work on our caterpillars together. So the first thing you need is to get your clothespin and your six little pom-poms, your short pipe cleaner, two little eyes, and you'll have a magnet which you can stick to the back of your completed caterpillar. 
And you can put love notes to mommy in there and put it on the fridge. Or you can have this for holding recipe cards. Um, so, but it will stick onto your refrigerator. So the first thing I think we need to do, oh, and you will need some glue to glue them on. The first thing you need to do is pick out which color pom-pom you want for your head. And I think I want the pretty yellow one. So you'll need your glue, and you can put a dot of glue on to the pointy end of your clothespin. Put your head on there, and we will let that dry. And I think, looking at the caterpillar, I think putting our antenna next. So you'll fold the pipe cleaner in half, into a like a V, and put your dab of glue onto your clothespin. I've got very leaky glue. And we can put the antenna there. Then we need a, the rest of the bodies. So I'm going to just make a nice strip of glue. And then I can glue all my pom-poms on. And my poor caterpillars the antenna just fell off. Maybe it wants the body to help hold it up. Okay, do whatever pattern you like. I'm missing one there. I wanted the green as the end because I think that green is a very happy color. Whoops, he fell off too. Want a nice sticky glue, and then I'll need to let it dry. So very carefully, and I should have probably put the eyes on first. Very carefully on your head. Put your eyes. caterpillar is all dry, then you can peel the back of your magnet off and stick it on the bottom of your caterpillar. Now like I said, um, the caterpillar changes into a butterfly after it goes in a chrysalis. So I thought, well I'll make a butterfly then. And you can make however you want. I use coffee filters. I had made two different. I didn't know which kind I liked. I think I like the um, water wash look. So if your mommy has an extra um, clothespin, and if she has some pipe cleaner, and whatever you want to make your butterfly wings out of, I use, like I said, I use coffee filter, but you could use tissue paper. Um, there is it. I'd love to see what you thought you could use, because I bet it would work. So what I did with the coffee filter, I pinched it in the middle, top and bottom, and try and get the wings about equal. There's my butterfly wings. And you can take that and put the butterfly wings right in the clothespin. And then fold your antenna. That can go in there too. And then there you have a little butterfly. 
that was just a something fun that I thought I could do. So I hope that you all are doing well. School is almost over and um, I hear little things saying that you may be getting to uh, meet outside in the summertime so that'll be wonderful. See you soon. Bye-bye.